You started your fund, uh, I believe, at the worst possible time. Uh, that was in 2007. Uh, do you regret this decision? Do I what? Regret? regret? Yeah. Um, oh, I, 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 I have to say yes to that because our, you know, our early clients, our early people that, that gave us support um, lost money for the first couple of years. So uh, there, was no, there was no way around that. Uh, we took about a year to get up and running. We've got a, if you think about running a prospectus mutual fund, we happen to also be a mutual fund dealer. So we're regulated up to the yin yang and it took us about a year to get ready and find those managers I talked about. Um, we prayed every day of that year that the markets would, uh, would pull back, you know, because we were in a pretty, through, through 06 and into 07, it was a pretty good market. And, uh, but th those things are tough to time. You know, you can't, you could have gone on for two more years and you'd be waiting and waiting. So it's, it's, uh, you'd be market timing if you tried to, to get too tactical on that. Well this, well, this actually takes me to my second question is, um, how would you know that your manager is doing a, a lousy job or, 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 the, or the market uh, circumstances are, are exceptionally bad? Uh, let's say you, you give your funds to, to somebody, you're just an individual investor and you give them your yeah. funds and, and the manager is doing their best, but uh, so how, 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 how would an investor know? Well, there's, there's, you're, you're, you've got to assess performance on, on lots of levels. One is, one is sort of uh, you've got to consider what's the right time frame. And that's, you know, people all say, what is the right time frame as an investor? I should look at my managers or my stocks. And, and it, does, it does vary, but it's got to be reasonably long. So, so a, a full cycle, probably four or five years and out. Um, the types of markets you're in and the type of manager you have running your fund uh, will will determine a lot of it. Uh, if you're, you know, if you've got a go-go manager, go-go resource manager, and you're in a go-go resource market, um, you'd expect the fund to generate pretty good returns. If they don't, um, there's real issues there. So, uh, we uh, uh, there's times when I'm perfectly happy, and we've got a manager that's uh, sucking wind, but it's not his market. We don't expect him to have done that well through that. It's not very palatable for clients. They think it's an excuse. But as I assess and monitor our managers, I'm saying, you know, if, if manager A was doing well in this market, I'd be more worried because that's not their style. Um, so it's, as I, as I said in the earlier presentation, I think uh, um, we have to be very, very uh, uh, patient. And the, the biggest thing we watch, though, is personnel. And personnel and philosophy change. Now, most of you don't own funds, but um, you can even do this test on yourself is uh, if you've got a you know, what you want to try and do is think about how I'm going to make money, or in my case, how my managers are going to make money. And, and uh, I alluded to the fact that I've been at it a while, and I look across the table at these managers, and I want them, I want to see it in their eyes that they know how they're going to make money, because you know what, there's a zillion, you're going to have guest speakers come through this group in the next few years, and they all have a different approach, you know, technical, fundamental, value, growth, whatever. Um, but you as investors want to know how you're going to make money and stick to it. And so, if, so uh, I look for, for any change of philosophy and then people. Uh, I believe people are going to make our clients money. So Gord O'Reilly, who's one of the principals at CGOV, the, the O in CGOV that runs our equity fund, if Gordy moves on, falls out of his boat this summer sh fishing, um, that's a huge uh, assessment of, uh, of, of that, that manager. Uh, have you had any second thoughts about managers you've hired already? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say we had second thoughts. I mean, we've had hard discussions with, uh, you know, it's only been three years, but um, uh, for instance, our small cap manager has uh, got a superb long-term record, um, but Will Witherich uh, uh, had a great 07, great 08. Um, really missed the small cap market in 09, just didn't really, uh, I didn't think, believe it was going to come alive. And he, and, he, and he owns very good sound companies. He didn't miss on the analysis there, but he didn't own enough kind of zip. So uh, he had a horrible 09. We spent a long time going through that. And, uh, but I, you know, Will's the same guy he's always been. Uh, it's part of the reason, you know, uh, he missed 09. And uh, so I'd say, no, we haven't had any regrets, but I, uh, certainly there's been patches where you know, you go, have they lost it? But I don't think they have, so. 
Now, um, actually, I guess a question that comes to mind is, what would, what would be your value added? Um, you give, I guess, funds to other managers. So let's say I, I, I'm an investor. Why wouldn't I go directly to some of your fund uh, uh, managers? Well, you, in some cases you can. Uh, generally, you need a lot of money to do that. You know, so one of the things SteadyHand does is brings managers that have two million, or in the case of Edinburgh Partners, hundred million sterling uh, minimums to the table. So. Um, uh, our clients and, and many of our clients have recognized that they can get managers that they couldn't get otherwise. So, so uh, that's part of the value add. The other value add is my 27 years. Not everybody in this room or everybody in client land is going to buy into wanting to invest along Tom Bradley's along with Tom Bradley. But this is my portfolio, and uh, we we're just getting ready to uh, put the pin in on measuring how much of our financial assets are in our funds. And uh, the first year it was 80. Last year, June of 09, it was 81% of our team's financial assets are in the fund. So um, that's basically what people are getting. So that's the second part of the value add. Good or bad, uh, you're, yeah. getting, you're getting my 27 years and, and uh, you're getting my wife and my portfolio. Uh, and, and some people have said, yeah, I'm, I'm all in. I want to follow along with that. Uh, well, uh, uh, the, your company, one reason, actually, we have decided to, or I've decided, I guess, to, um, that um, uh, that your company would be a good fit to come and present is, is, is you have a beautiful model. Uh, it's low fees, it's transparency, it's focus on absolute returns. Uh, now, all these attributes, are they paying off in the marketplace? The, um, well, thank you. Uh, uh, we think we agree. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, I, I mean, absolutely paying off. Um, you know, 100 million is not economic yet for us. Um, if you guys wanted to do the math, and and we've got eight people on staff, and we we run a, uh, a basically a, a a full-on platform. We have a wealth management system. That we can we can manage billions of dollars, etc. So there's a bit of build it and they will come. But uh, is it paying off as far as having having been able to stake out our territory? Um, absolutely. I, in fact, uh, you know, James talked about uh, never being being uh, satisfied, and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of truth to that. I think where we are satisfied is the the ability to have found enough clients in Canada that actually care about the philosophy of their manager or care about fees. So, um, uh, is it paying off? I think it's too early to say. You know, are we going to be a billion or a two billion dollar firm? That's certainly our aspirations, but. Uh, um, but as far as uh, servicing clients that have those needs, yeah, for sure. And then why do you think the, the mutual fund industry actually in Canada is not following a model similar to yours? Is it the banking oligopoly uh, that is governing that market? Or is, is it another, <clears throat> another reason why you seem to stand out so easily because you have such a, a, a competitive product? But Well, I think we've done a good we stood out partly because we do a good job of communicating. Uh, we we aren't uh, we don't have much sales DNA in our in our bloods, but we I think we have reasonably good marketing and communication skills. So uh, that's helped. Um, I'll tell you in answering. I'll tell you a story. I was just over here at the BC Securities Commission in oh, late oh six, early oh seven, and we were getting going through all the hoops to get uh, registered and licensed. And um, one of the senior officials there, the number two or three person there, he, at the end of the meeting he says, he says, Tom, I love what you're doing, this is really cool. He says, then he pauses and he says, but nobody's going to follow you. And uh, what he meant was it's going to be really hard because all roads lead to the advisor in this country or uh, the advisor or the bank branch. And we do, you use the word oligopoly, um, I use that in my writing all the time to get my digs in on the branch banks, but we have a banking oligopoly. We have very good banks, they're well run, but they, they work, they're they're, they've got a nice cozy little club and so they they have the branch network and they have now they have the dealer network they bought all of those firms the firm I work for Richardson Greenshield is now part of Royal etc so they have the landscape pretty much locked up with a, with very few exceptions so um, it's not in their best interest to follow this model and uh, but it, but the other side is it's hard it's hard to reach around those guys and get to the to the end user without a big budget and uh, um, you know, I talked about that inefficiency time frame. 
Uh, we're doing that to run our business. We're trying to run our business like we'd invest our portfolio, and I think um, we're sort of time frame or we're time arbitraging this because there's there's only a few people in Canada that have seen it work before, and I'm privileged enough to, to be one of those people at Philip Sager and North. Uh, I alluded to it earlier. Nobody got what we were trying to do, but we were just a little more patient. So, um, but it's hard. I think that's why, and and uh, there's a there's a vested interest in staying with what they have.